In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your knife super sharp. Look at how it glides through a tomato slice and just creates a super thin slice. Now in this next shot, pay attention to my hand. I'm not even holding the knife. It's just resting in the palm of my hand. Now that is sharpness. Yes, it's true. I'm gonna show you how to make a knife so sharp it'll glide through food without any resistance, just like you saw with that tomato. Now, my first ever sharpening video and the only sharpening video I ever made on my YouTube channel was a raging success. It was the first video I ever had to hit 1 million views. And why I'm telling you this is because that was six years ago and I decided I would never make another sharpening video just for views. I would only make one if I could do it better. And now, six years later, I feel like I've learned a lot about sharpening and I want to share that with you now. So, if you want to have your knives super sharp, like mine, and you want to cut stuff really effectively and clean, then keep watching this video. The method I'm going to show you today is going to use whetstones and a leather strop system. Now, the whetstones are your basic standard sharpening system. Uh, these are stones that are made by compressing particles together and gluing them and they have what is known as the grit system. Now the grit system here, this number, 400 and then 1000, that means this side of the stone is 400 grit and this side is 1000 grit. Now the grit, a quick explanation, is the lower the number, the bigger the particles and the higher the number, the smaller the particles. So obviously if you have big particles, you're going to end up with a rougher surface that's going to take away more metal. And that's good for removing chips and stuff like that. Now, the higher the number, so as you go up in the number, it's going to be more polished, so it's going to remove less of it, but have a much smoother surface. Now, you can get stones that go all the way up to 30,000, but realistically, uh, you just need somewhere between eight, I mean, 400 to 8,000, and you're good to go. But you should have a couple in between there. I'm going to show you today the stones I'm going to be using, and you can get the same exact ones of Amazon, I'll put links in the description. Now, the strop, this is the key to getting a razor sharp edge because this is an even finer polish and it's just so effective at getting your knife to be able to get to that sharpness where it's just gliding through food like it's not there. And that's very important to have a sharp knife like that when you're making sushi, for example, you want to have clean cuts through fish and also say, for example, sushi rolls, if you want to cut your sushi roll, you're going to want something that goes through it easily, cleanly, and with not much resistance. So you get a more beautiful finish of your sushi roll. So it's very impossible to make a sushi roll, say, with a, a blunt knife, let's say. Now, uh, the first step will be soaking your water stones and flattening them. Now, flattening them is very important because if you have a slight curve on your stone, it's going to make a slight curve on the edge of your blade, which will make it more dull. So you have to flatten these stones. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, let's start. You're gonna add some water into a container, enough to submerge your stones underwater. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your stones and just lay them in there. Now you're gonna to wanna to let them soak for five to 10 minutes. Don't let the high grit ones soak for too long because I have heard they crack if they're left to soak for too long. So just let them soak up the water and get nice and hydrated. And then once they're ready, then you just take it out, place it into its wooden support with the rubber fixture. Just pop that in there. And now we're going to draw a little grid pattern with a pencil. And this is just so you know where there's curves or dents or things you need to fix with the flattening stone. So. In the box, you get this small little flattening stone, but I don't really like using this. I'd rather use this bigger one. You can buy this on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below. And just wet it, and then just rub away the big grid pattern you just drew on. 
So just go up and down like this and you can see there's a little bit of a curve here that needs to be removed since the grid pattern wasn't disappearing there. So just keep going until the grid pattern is fully gone and then once it's gone you're going to want to taper off the edges and for that you just place your stone at a 45 degree angle on the corners like that and just taper it off and this helps to stop the knife blade catching on the corners a little bit. Okay, now moving on to the most important part about knife sharpening, the angle. You have to maintain an angle that is the same during your sharpening because if you move it, what happens is you're hitting the edge of the knife at several points and you'll create a curve. So if you imagine you zoom into your knife and it's got two flat sides like this. This is a symmetrical example. But if you were to have a curve in it like that, it would create more resistance when you're trying to get through food. So what I mean is, as you have your knife on the stone and you pull it across, it has to maintain the same angle. If you fluctuate, you're going to create a curve on the edge of your blade which will not be good and will not make you have that super sharpness that I'm trying to show you how to get in this video. Another thing to think about is this is a Japanese blade. So it's sharpened at a lower angle on this side and a higher angle on this side. And you sharpen it 70% on this side and 30 on this side. That is for right handed use. A Western blade, for example, is sharpened equally on both sides, usually between 16 to 28 degrees but a Japanese knife will be sharpened at a much lower angle and it will have the 70-30 rule. So what that translates to is as a crude example, um, you just put three pennies on one side of your whetstone and two pennies on the other side. So for this side, you would use two pennies and then for the other side, you use three pennies. Now there are also these special angle guides that you can buy that show you what the angle is that you're using and that way you can see it in a more visual way. But you don't keep the coins on your sharpening stone or the angle guides. It's just so that you get a visual example of it. Although the angle guides do have a little rubber strap to keep it on there. But it's just to have a guide just to get in your head more or less what the angle is. Um, but the most important thing here is just to maintain the same angle. So don't go fast, just go slow at first, just get used to the angle, make sure you're getting the right angle and the same angle across as you sharpen across a stone. That's the most important part. Okay, so to sharpen your knife on a stone, you're gonna to wanna to keep this nice and wet, always the surface. It's a Japanese water stone, so you wanna keep it nice and moist. Now, holding your knife, you should do whatever feels comfortable to you when you're sharpening, but the method I use is pretty comfortable and works pretty well. So, you turn to this side and you want to bring the tip of your knife to the edge of the stone. Now you put your thumb on the heel and your index finger around here. And this gives you a lot of control over angle and it feels pretty comfortable. Now, you're going to use your other hand with your fingers to press down wherever the blade is on the stone. So you get a uniform pressure. Now you don't want to press very hard and you only want to press when you drag down. And when you go up, you're going to let go of pressure. And I'm just going to let go just to symbolize that. But realistically, you don't let go. And you don't have to apply a lot of pressure. Now, another thing to take note, if you saw there, I start at a 45 degree angle here with the back up a little bit since I'm working on the tip of the knife. And as I go down, I lower the back and I turn the knife. So we get a nice uniform direction across the blade. Now, if this was a different kind of knife, I wouldn't do that. For example, a cleaver or a butcher's cleaver or a santoku, it has a more straight knife edge. But since this is your standard chef knife, it has a curve to it, which you have to take into account. So again, you just place your positioning, put your right angle with the stone, and then you start. Now that should take about 12 to 15 strokes to go one side of the blade. 
and then you want to flip the knife over and then you want to do the other side. Now, again, always keep your stone nice and lubricated. And now that we've done this side once, we're going to do the other side. So for that, you put your thumb close to the edge and your index finger at the heel. And then we're going to start at this side of the stone because it's a bit more comfortable. And you're going to put the tip at a 45 degree angle to the stone. And then again, we're just going to do the same turning motion as before. Okay, now that you've done that, you want to do that about twice on each side for one uh, grit level. This is the 1000 grit. And then after you've done that twice, then you're just going to want to clean the knife a little bit. So we just go across once very lightly, no pressure nearly. And again, the other way. And the reason for doing that is because a burr starts to develop. And what a burr is, is metal that as you start sharpening, say this side, it'll curve over a little lip of metal. And you're gonna to wanna to get rid of that. And to do that is that last little cleaning, but realistically, you should be trying to get rid of that with the, uh, with the sharpening. And as you move up, the burr will become less and less. Okay, so once you've done that with one grid level, then you move on to the next one. So from 1,000, we go to 3,000, then to 6,000, and then 8,000. And then at the 8,000 level, your knife will be super polished and beautiful. But it's the same movement we do, so I'm not gonna show you again the same thing over and over again. Moving on to the stropping. Okay, so stropping. Now this is a piece of wood with four leather straps glued to it, and each of them has a different compound on it. You get this as a sort of kit. This one is medium, this one is fine, and this one's super fine. Now what you do is you take your compound and you just add it to the same one. You don't want to be mixing these. Oh, little bit there. So just add it like that, and then the green one on the green one. and the red one on the red one. Okay, and once you've done that, then you're gonna to wanna to take your knife and you begin on the lowest one, so medium, and you just want to, again, keep the same angle and with no pressure at all, you just go up and down the blade in one direction. You cannot go in two directions with a strop. You have to lift off and come back. And you do a pulling motion across the whole of it. Now, if you're a bit confused about the angle, what you can do is rest it flat on the leather strap, and then you start going backwards and pull it up, and when it just starts to catch there, then you just go at that angle across and that would be the perfect angle for stropping. So do it on the whole of the knife on one of these, then again, the whole of the knife on this, and I repeat with no pressure at all, nothing. You just have the, the weight of the knife itself, just doing it. Because in leather, with leather, if you press down, it's going to create a little curve. So you really don't want to do that. So again, just continue stropping all the way across the blade and you do this on all three of them. And then you get just razor sharpness beyond anything. But the key here is patience and just trying to keep that same angle all the time. And then once you're done with that, you're just gonna have a knife that's so sharp that is just insane. It just slices through everything like butter. There you go, enjoy. Lastly, let's talk about the equipment I use so you guys can get the same stuff or at least have more information about it. The stones I've been using are Sharp Pebble. They're pretty reasonably priced. I'm gonna link them in the description. And most of the kits, when you buy it, they come with this wooden frame and this rubber holding mat, which is pretty nice. They also have this uh, flattening stone that I showed before that you use to flatten, but I don't really find this one that effective. I recommend you get one of these. They're only like $14 or something like that. And they come with these ridges that are very helpful because it lets all the material go out. And it's just very quick at doing its job. 
Uh, lastly, the leather strap. Now this is uh, four leather straps mounted on a piece of wood for easy use. And it comes with these compound waxes that you can apply. It's a whole kit, I'll link in the description also. You get bigger ones too, you get ones you can mount on tables and stuff like that. But having four like this in one place is pretty useful. Uh, I, I like it. Oh, and the knife. The knife I've been using is also from Sharp Pebble. They were kind enough to send me the stones and the knife uh, for this video. I'll link that in the description also. I think that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.